Oh, let's get started. And I'm going to turn things over to Kim Tyler from the Barracks Inn in Sackets Harbor. And, and I am from the Barracks Inn. Barracks Inn is actually my third restaurant that I've owned and operated. So I have a little bit of information to give you about each of the ones I've operated and the differences. And actually, it's all exciting stuff, I think, that will hopefully interest you even more in this career. So last year, my husband and I decided to embark upon a new restaurant venture, and that's when we purchased the Barracks Inn from Leo Coleman, who actually owned and operated it since 1984. He's another big uh, restaurant tour in the area, great guy, wealth of knowledge and information. So again, I'm here to encourage you to really pursue a career in the restaurant hospitality business. I've been in it my whole life and, um, and have loved it, and it has served me well. And even when I wasn't in it, which I will tell you a little bit about my story over the years, um, I was still serving my family at home, all of my five children and my husband. I, for 19 years of marriage, I was still using my restaurant background and it served me very well here as a mother and wife. So this last year really is unprecedented. And I think it's very demonstrative of how the restaurant business really truly is. You see, you have to be willing to bend with the winds of change or like a tree or you'll break, especially in the restaurant business. And I think it's more evident than ever with the coronavirus appearing on the scene and causing a worldwide pandemic. And, you know, you have to constantly update and make changes and stay fresh and not just keep your food fresh, but have fresh ideas. Um, you always need to be evolving. It's, it's actually unimaginable how many times we've changed directions and things that we've wanted to do at the Berkson just within the last 12 months. For instance, when we first opened, we really wanted to serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner and be open as many days as possible, but it was Tuesday to Saturday and we had great hours of 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., actually to 10 p.m. And then within the very first week, we realized that's too much. We can't do this. And we abbreviated that and we just ended up serving lunch and dinner and just had the hours of 12 to 9. And that served us very well. We um, very quickly had a lot of interest in people wanting to have events there and weddings. So with, in the first week of being open, I had about seven different people approach me for weddings that they wanted to have within the next two months of summer. So that was quite challenging, but um, we had a great time. So our very first wedding was 200 people a month after we opened. And we pulled it off. And uh, it was great. It was, it was a lot of fun. And that kind of made us realize that that was something more that we really wanted to be involved in. And, and the Barracks Inn is pretty much ideal for that with its decor that we put into it and its capacity. We can fit 150 people inside and out. And it's just, it's very suited for weddings. So when the coronavirus came along, it brought more changes than anyone could have ever imagined. And, um, and with that, a lot of restaurants have closed permanently and many restaurants are closed for an undetermined amount of time. And my heart really goes out to them. So we had to be make, willing to make changes we really never anticipated with this. But again, change is really the only thing that's constant in life and especially in the restaurant business. So if you look at all the changes we've made just in the last 12 months with just this one restaurant, you can imagine how constantly evolving the restaurant business is. So to me, I think the restaurant business is a mixture of entertaining show business and hospitable service. You have to be a servant if you wanna be in the restaurant business. You really have to be willing to serve people. And, and love to entertain and, and throw a good time for people. Um, I'm the main cook or chef, if you wanna call me that, the Barracks Inn. Um, prior to uh, my record for meals made, I boasted of making 72 lunches in an hour and a half at the last restaurant I owned, which is where I met my husband. Um, it's called the Phoenix Cafe. It's still in operation today. I sold it to a man and just recently, he sold it again as I opened up the Barracks Inn to another person. 
So I built that restaurant out as a startup operation in 1999. And uh, what, 21 years later, it's still thriving. So today, my new record, since the barracks in, I'm proud to say I've made, what, 90 dinners in an hour and a half? So um, you want to talk about stressful. I know where the saying comes from. If you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen. Because let me tell you, there were a few times I wanted to run right out of that kitchen. We weren't open two weeks and I had horrible burns over my whole hand from cooking salmon in the grease. And it's just finally healing and I'm getting the nerve regeneration back. So, you know, it's not for the faint hearted. It's challenging, but I love it. And um, if you really enjoy running on adrenaline, then the restaurant business really is, especially for you. Um, so the Barracks Inn is my third restaurant, but my first restaurant I owned and operated brought its own list of problems and obstacles and challenges. And it was a 20,000 square foot building in Miami in the district of Brickle, which is the second largest financial district in the world. And it was a historical building. So it was the five, fourth fire station built in all of Florida. So with that came a whole other ball of conundrums, honestly, because I had to deal with the Historical Preservation Committee. And um, basically, you know, they tell you what you can do with your restaurant, what you can and can't do with your restaurant. And I obliged them and, you know, they had good recommendations or mandations, really. But this restaurant, I think it afforded me so many really unique opportunities I'm going to share with you. So the first being shortly before I opened it, I was asked to be on the Super Bowl committee in Miami. So this particular restaurant really had a lot of press and, um, and people knew it. As I said, it was a historical building, the fourth fire station in all of Florida. And so lo and behold, I got invited to be on the Super Bowl committee. And the very first meeting, I brought in my chocolate chip cookies just as a nice gesture. I wasn't expecting anything in return. And the director of the NFL said, I hereby declare these the official cookie of the NFL. And so with that, I sold thousands of these cookies for years. Um, I don't know if you can see the label I created, but I got to use the NFL logo. It was pretty neat. And um, when I moved, I decided after that restaurant, I missed my family and I wanted to be closer to home. So I moved back to Augsburg and that's when I opened up the Phoenix Cafe. Um, but back to this other restaurant, the Firehouse Four. Um, you know, as I had that, another great opportunity happened. There were many Rest, there were many producers that came in and wanted to film movies in the restaurant. And so I let them. And part of that, I got to be in movies. And um, I actually got a speaking role as a news reporter in one of them. And because of that, I could have got my SAG card, which is your Screen Actors Guild card. And I could have pursued a whole, you know, uh, vocation in acting. But that was not my calling. But again, the restaurant business is part of that. I really do feel like the restaurant business is showbiz. It is the entertainment business. Um, and my favorite part is serving people, you know, and seeing the smiles on their faces when you give them something they love to eat. And seeing the smiles on their faces when you made a special anniversary more special or a birthday, you know, bringing out a dessert, wishing them happy birthday and celebrating with them. That's the stuff I love. It's um, those payments are priceless. And to me, you know, food is the ingredient that binds and brings everyone together. Every great event and gathering has food. Breaking bread together is not only religious, but essential to us as social beings, which is why adults and children alike are sick of eating grocery food right now. As I've heard little kids call their parents meals and are very eager to get out and eat restaurant food again after all these months of isolation. So, um, you know, after the Firehouse Four again, like I said, I moved back to Augsburg and opened up the Phoenix Cafe in 1999. And just three months after I opened that, uh, I met my husband there. So another great thing that happened to me because of the restaurant business. And three months later, um, we were engaged and we got married. And so I ended up selling that. And um, I say that honestly, you know, it was my cooking that won his heart and still keeps it today. 
Food is the way to a man's heart. So after 19 years of marriage and five kids, again, we decided to get back into this business. And for me, the most challenging part, looking back in hindsight, for me, the most challenging part now versus 19 years ago with the restaurant business is social media. It was my nemesis at first, but then I learned to turn it into my ally. It's very hard when you're working so many hours and putting your blood, sweat, and tears into something to see someone make a negative comment about something they experienced. You know, that wasn't what happened to me 19 years ago. People didn't do this. They had a problem. They came to you and told you and you took care of it. They didn't broadcast it for thousands of people to see and read and affect their decisions. So to me, that's been the hardest and most challenging part of the restaurant business now. Um, and, you know, when I was doing this 19 years ago, the World Wide Web was just in its infancy. Um, in fact, when I lived in Florida, it was actually one of my friends who started the World Wide Web. He was one of the brains behind it, Chris Taplin. And we were in his father's office one day when he was showing us this. And his father and I were both thinking, this is never going to succeed. No one's going to want to, you know, be interested in this. Lo and behold, he didn't listen to us naysayers. That's good, that's great. But with the social media, you know, as I said, I've decided to make it my ally. And when we announced that we had bought and we were opening the Barracks Inn, more than 23,000 people were reached. You know, word of mouth is your best advertising, but I've really learned to utilize social media to our advantage and make it our ally. And I, you know, that's something I think businesses definitely have to do. You have to take courses in technology or have five kids that know technology better than you do, which is my case. Um, but uh, let's see. So after having survived the first year of social media, we now are very excited to make posts, create posts of our, you know, food we create and pictures of the restaurant. And it, it's like I said, it's a great way to reach people. And to advertise for free, really. I mean, um, we're super excited to start this year, even though there's a lot of extra obstacles, you know, that we're going to have to overcome with COVID and all of the regulations and um, extra work. But in closing, I really want you guys to know, follow your dreams. If it's into the restaurant business, hospitality business, even tourism. And if you have a passion for food, don't listen to anyone. They'll try and dissuade you from following your dreams. Every time I opened a restaurant, people tried to dissuade me from opening them. But don't listen to the naysayers, just like my friend Chris Taplin. Didn't listen to me and his father say, oh, this World Wide Web, this, this is a weird, weird thing. This isn't going to take off. Um, he didn't listen to us. And don't you guys listen to the naysayers either. Um, you know, just follow your heart. And I guess at this time, if you have any questions and I have time left, I'd be happy to answer them. Well, you have time. Um, and, oh, am I? Okay, good. I'm not muted. <laughs> um, and Emily actually asked a question and I tried to answer her by typing it in, but that wouldn't work. So we'll, I'll um, oh, tell I see. you what her question is. And how I answered, I tried to answer is, do you need a college for working at weddings? And I would say, no, you do not. Absolutely and not. that I actually paid for helped pay for my college degree by working as a waitress and yeah. working yeah. weddings at a golf course in Malone, New York. So Two. that is doable. Yep, definitely. I've been in every facet of the restaurant business, dishes, everything you can imagine. And no, you definitely don't need a degree. And I'm thinking, you know, like you would probably hire somebody who is hardworking, dedicated. Like, That's, what are the some of the other criteria that you would look for in someone to come work for you? I would personally rather train someone. You know, um, I think everyone thinks differently, but the way we think about this is we would much rather train someone the way we would like them to be. I think it's easier than having someone come in with a vast amount of experience behind them and doing things the way that they're completely used to and accustomed to. Because, I mean, I also worked for the Ritz Carlton throughout the years and you know, I really, they are, they are really the people to emulate in the hospitality, restaurant, tourism business. Everything is, you know, my pleasure. We went through almost a month of training before we could even enter into one of the hotels to be, you know, their uh, staff. So 
I really have the mindset. I'd much rather train someone unexperienced and teach them the way I would like it done um, than have them come in with, you know, their own backgrounds where they've been and the places they worked. Um, that's my personal opinion. But I do have a couple very experienced wait staff, and that's really helpful too, you know, to um, when you're busy, which we've been since we opened. So it's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Does that answer the question. <laughs> I, I think so. Um, and then I, I guess I would add too that everybody should know that you can come for some training by coming to a BOCES program. Yes. We have a culinary, and I know Kim has, um, yes. is one of the people that yes. advises our teachers. So to make sure that our teachers are including things that would be important. So um, yes, we have a two year culinary program. You can come for one year and do um, culinary cooking or you can come for one year and do baking, or you can come for both years and get that under your belt. And um, we include an internship so that you would be spending some time in an actual restaurant doing some work to learn more about that. And those are good, pro good programs for you to think about. And your program, you're, you're really underplaying it. My three best employees, you know, while you don't need a degree or any training in it, I will tell you my three best employees, my very first employee that was hired, before we opened was Jordan Flagg, who went through BOCES, and he's now at JCC going through the program. He um, was my first employee. He's amazing. I, I can't, he and Nick Robinson and Sierra Roy, all three of them went to BOCES and to JCC, and they are, they're the best. I just, they're incredible. So I would definitely, you know, just because it's here in your hometown, it's really a diamond in the rough. It's a jewel and you should take advantage of it and get that training, you know, especially if you want to work in the kitchen aspect of it or management aspect of it, then you need to have, you know, more formalized training and BOCES and JCC are amazing, amazing mm -hmm. opportunities for you. And if you want to do that, you need to go talk to your school counselor and um, let them know that you're interested and good to let them know that you're interested early so if you're only in middle school i don't know anything about the our five attendees but if you're only in middle school you should start talking to them about it now don't wait um there are certain things you might want to take as a freshman and a sophomore so that you would be able to come as a junior or senior junior or senior so make sure you talk to them about it now and like kim is saying don't let people dissuade you yes. if that's your yes. dream you need to follow it Definitely. And does anyone else have more questions? You can type it in, you can raise your hand. And it looks like um, Melissa will not be able to join us today. Um, so yeah, sadly, but she was from Bella's and Clayton. So hopefully we will be able to hear some more from her. And when the recorded sessions go up, um, hopefully we will be able to have more information from her. So if, um, oh, it looks like hey, we so do have another question. Hmm? So I had another question. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Sounds good. So I bet the kids would want to know what films, what movies were filmed at your restaurant in Florida. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm dying to know. Okay, so when when they're producing the movie, you don't have a title. They have like a working title. So at the time, it was something like uh, Michael Kale and Contenga, and um, it was a French producer, Patrick. He was in France, kind of known as Steven Spielberg here, and um, <laughs> we became very good friends. And the actual finished title, I think my cousin found what it was, but it's um. It's, it has Victoria Principal in it. Mickey, Ro uh, Mickey Rooney was in it. Um, I think he's deceased now, but he was pushing yeah. 100 when he was in it. Um, let's see who else was, what's the one Elliot Gould was in? Elliot Gould was in it. He was married to Barbara Streisand. Um, not at the time he was in this, but that's kind of what he's also known for. Um, and Victoria Principal, what a beautiful lady, even prettier in person. But she was the leading, uh, actress in it and um she was it's kind of it was a documentary not a documentary the movie was about pretty sure a man named michael kale and in katanga africa and um again i was you know part of the press in a newsroom at a computer and they 
my friend Patrick, the producer, threw in a question for me to ask just so I could, you know, get my Screen Actors Guild card. Um, and, uh, and just because I let them film stuff there. Um, that was one of the movies. Um, that's the particular one that I gave reference to that I, I got the SAG card in. Um, I think, let's see, something about Mary um, oh. with George Clooney, Jennifer Lopez, and um, Eddie Murphy. Oh, wait, that was Holy Man. Holy Man was one of them. Um, and oh, who was the other? Matt Dillon was uh, in Something About Mary. And um, that was neat because, you know, you get to know these people because you're, you eat with them. Again, you break bread with these people. Food was there all day long, and you, you got to sit and eat all together. It was a really neat experience. Um, and uh, Jennifer Lopez was just as sweet as could be. Um, I was in a scene with her in the airport and someone ran into her and I thought she'd be really snippy about it, but she was so sweet and kind and charitable about it. And that always stuck in my mind. Um, Matt, uh, Matt Dillon, he didn't have much manners in eating. I think he needed a little horse and etiquette, but uh, he was a little rough around the edges. Um, Eddie Murphy was as big and vibrant of a personality as you mm -hmm. see on the stage and on the screens. Bigger than life personality. That's the best mm -hmm. way to describe him. Um, and in the movie, this movie, he was a holy man. So he was, and it, I mean, I'm no one to judge anyone, but it was pretty funny. It was kind of paradoxical, you know, and ironic. Um, and, uh, I'm in scenes there in the causeway, on the Miami causeway, um, driving in my vehicle at the time and uh, rollerblading around Miami Beach by the restaurant. And it was just, it was a lot of fun. I mean, that's why I said, you know, the restaurant business is showbiz. It's part of the entertainment business. It's the service industry. It's all the above. And everyone, no matter where you go, loves food. Everyone has to eat. And everyone wants to go to a great restaurant and get a table at a great restaurant. And, you know, so you kind of become these famous people in your own right and means, too, because I don't I wouldn't have gained this, you know, uh, popularity on my own if I didn't have this restaurant behind me, you know, attracting people to it and involving me in their different ventures. It's a lot of fun. Had a lot of really great things I just kind of fell into, honestly, you know, just pursuing my passions and loving food. <laughs> I'm guilty of loving food. I don't hide it. I, I live to eat. You know, I, I really do. I love food and <laughs> always have. So um, I think those were, those were most of the movies. Um, That's okay. We're real. We're so happy that you have taken your, brought your passion here to the North Country and shared that at the Bear Sand. So yeah. we're very, and can't tell you how much we appreciate you talking to our students like this. So, really um, students, any last minute questions? I had a comment. Yes, I'll let you, I'll let you wrap up now. If you'd like. okay. um, just really quick, can you, both of you, I think, because this is a good topic for both of you. Could you talk about how tourism is so important to Jefferson County and North Country and, and just give a little more insight on how tourism impacts the hospitality business? Who do you want to go first? Doesn't matter. You choose. <laughs> well, for us at the Barracks Inn, and this what, you know, uh, more than 80% of our business comes from tourism. So about 15% of our business is local people and more than 80 some percent is from tourism. It's essential for Sackets Harbor, particularly in Clayton where, um, you know, Bella's is also in a lot of the restaurants on all of the water. It's uh, tourism that is our really more than our bread and butter. Um, you know, I love the local folk and I, I try to appeal to them too, but most of our, even our weddings, like most of our weddings are from people. We've had people in Toronto, Ohio, um, Connecticut, 
where else? Just in this last year, um, you know, coming from all over the place, Syracuse, um, Florida. So tourism is huge up here. We really, really depend on it. And I yeah, I bet like they if they come to do a way have a wedding at your place, then there's that nice little hotel, yes. little boutique hotel down there in Sackets. Yep. So that's great. And everybody, you know, one of the things I hear too is that like the more restaurants there are, the better for all of the restaurants because yeah, absolutely. everyone I it's really a I great agree. world to, to be in. Traffic flow and you know, and overflow. If people can't get into one, they'll go to another, you know, and there's a lot of great, I think one guy that he's an unsung hero that I've come to be friends with and really like a lot is Mike Campbell. I don't know if any of you know him, but he was the original man that was picked and selected um, and actually won over a Harvard graduate to become the first uh, manager of the mall, of the Salmon River Mall. Great guy. Another guy. He doesn't have a formal education in this background, yet he was chosen over a person with a Harvard degree. And he's just, he's amazing. He's, uh, he brings a lot of, a lot of tours to Sackett's Harbor. He um, is part owner of the Marina Inn right there behind me in that Marina and, um, and helps with, he actually is part controlling owner of all of uh, the barracks in Madison Inn apartments, but just a great guy. He's brought in like the New York state, I forget, uh, the New York, I think like all of the different, and they haven't had it in a couple years, I think. Maybe you ladies would know better than I do, but they had big gatherings where people from all over New York State would come with their products. He helped put that together. He's- Oh, yes. He, he I forget used, what it was called. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? He yes. helped um, bring in, he is very um, helpful with bringing in the big acts, the big entertainment acts for JRC. Um, He's kind of a music man in, in that area too, but just a great guy. He's, I don't think he ever gets enough credit in my opinion. Um, and he has, he's just a great guy with helping with tourism. And again, just another person with a wealth of knowledge. Great guy, Mike Campbell. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, I learned a lot from this too. I love attending these because I learned so much. Um, thank you to our attendees who came. I hope you got something out of this and how hospitality and especially the restaurant business is, I'm going to say, popping in Jefferson County in northern New York. Um, we have really great programs over at BOCES for them. I have eaten the food over at BOCES from the culinary and baking students. And let me tell you, it is choice. So we have really great programs here. Um, I highly encourage you to go into this industry because you can have some amazing experiences like Kim has told you. Wow. She was offered a sad card for goodness sakes. You know, you can have some really memorable experiences and really amazing times and you can follow your passion too. Um, so definitely highly suggest checking this out on my GPS for success.com. You can see more, you can learn more about the industry um, and all the different places we have here, because as you well know, everywhere along the St. Lawrence river, it is a tourist town there. So make sure you check that out. Um, I encourage you to check out our next session, which is human services, grab something to eat really quick and then come join us again. We have a lot of presenters, so make sure that you're there. We have some really good great insight. Um, thank you again to Tracy, our moderator, and Kim. Thank you for your time. And I'm going to end this meeting here, this session here. If you have any feedback, you can check out that registration page on GPS for Success. Um, and there's a feedback button so you can tell us what you think about this. But have a wonderful day. I hope you stay dry, stay safe, and stay healthy. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks, ladies. Bye.